Welcome back to the Speaking and Communicating podcast. I am your host, Robert Sanzela. If you are looking to improve your communication skills, both professionally and personally, this is the podcast you should be tuning into. Communication and soft skills are crucial for your career growth and leadership development. We are looking for professionals or entrepreneurs who are willing to share their communication challenges on the show. And if this is of interest to you, please go to the show notes and you will find more details on how you can reach me and be part of the show. Now let's get communicating with Karen Roberts, joining us all the way from London. She is a podcast strategist and runs a podcast network where she helps coaches, consultants, healers, and therapists with their strategies and has a database that helps their clients to reach them easily, simply. And before I go any further, please help me welcome her to the show. Hey, Karen. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the show. It's my pleasure. Please introduce yourself. So my name's Karen Roberts and I've been podcasting now for about three years and I fell into it like maybe some people have done. Uh, At the beginning of lockdown, I put on an online summit and I had 20 coaches speaking on the event and I just loved it. I have met the most amazing people on my journey, all doing phenomenal things within their communities, serving. It's all about serving people. So now all we do with the podcast network is we help other coaches really get their message out there to the people who need to hear it. So we do all sort of the back end boring stuff that uh, puts people off, I think, from actually launching a podcast. So we try to simplify things and make it easy for them so that they can use podcasting as a vehicle to drive their business. Because would you agree with me, Roberta, that this is fun? It's very fun. When you say you've met amazing people, that I said, Dito, that's exactly what's been my experience for sure. It's so much fun. Yeah. And and I wouldn't never have met them, you know, like you say, you're over there, I'm over here. I just would not have come across uh, all the people that I've come across in everyday life. So this is just a fantastic platform to get your message out there. But more importantly, it's about developing relationships. So um, that's what I do. You know, business doesn't have to be dull and boring. And so many people are out there struggling to get attention on social media when, you know, I don't know about you, Roberta, but when I'm on social media, I'm just scrolling. I'm scrolling. You know, something might catch my attention. I might like it. But am I really paying attention? Whereas if people are listening to you, Roberta, they're list- they're, you are holding the attention of people. They have connected with you. They're resonating with you. They're staying. And this is what I want to sort of let people know that, you know, whatever business you're in, it really doesn't matter. Having the platform of having your own podcast channel is a fantastic way to not just showcase what you do, but also to demonstrate how you help people And you're building on the know, like, and trust factor because people are listening in the comfort of their own home or car or the gym, wherever they're listening to podcasts, and you're you're holding the attention. So people get to really know you because you just show up as you, you know, your authentic self. On, On social media these days with the rise of AI, anybody can write a post right anybody or you can, can look claim. different <laughs> you can look di- you could have an avatar it might not even be you but so far podcasting is the way you get to just show up as you and it's just having conversations it's easy you don't have to learn a script you don't have to you know you're just it's just conversational 
And that way people get to know the real you. And if it looks like it's a good fit further down the road, at the end of the day, you're going to attract the right people for you. So I love it. Attract the right people. Attract your tribe. Because here's the thing about since you work with coaches, I don't know if any of your clients have had this challenge of thinking, let my messaging be general so I attract everybody. Have you come yeah. across that? Oh, all the time, all the time. And, and it, it comes from fear, right? It comes from a scarcity mindset. And look, I did it in the beginning because you, you think, well, they might not want this, but I could help with this. And it comes from a place of wanting to serve, but your whole message gets watered down. And I did this in the beginning because I was trying to do everything. I'm a little bit ADHD anyway. So I like lots of different things, but it doesn't help because my whole business was disjointed. I had my podcast, then I was helping my clients with organic marketing helping them with sales, doing all this stuff because I thought I should be doing it. And now it's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Go back to what is it you love doing? And I love podcasting. So now we're like, we've got the strategy to help you guys. So let's stick with podcasting because you get to with throughout your own episodes, yes, you're there to teach, but it's more than that. Mm. You know, anybody can get information from a book, from a YouTube video. But if you find a way to use your content in a podcast in a way to showcase the transformation that you offer, rather than just teaching, just information isn't enough, is it? But when you can showcase through your episodes how you can take somebody from A to B and you can demonstrate clearly how you do that, you will attract the right people at the right time without having to sell a thing. Mm. You'd, it's like a before and after picture. Yeah of I used to be this and after going through the coaching, here's where I am. The transformation. Yeah, yes. absolutely. People don't want, you know, if you're a coach out there selling your coaching program, nobody wants to buy a coaching program. <laughs> they want the end result that going through your coaching program. And, and so many people are focused on the thing that they do mm. rather than demonstrating you know, what's the end game? You know, for me, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say to people, I'll give you your time back. <laughs> Who wants their time back and have fun whilst building a business? You know, mm -hmm. if I bored them with all the things you need to do to start and grow and look, you know, uh, monetize a podcast, man, they would have switched off. <laughs> you tell them the process. Boring. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the behind the scenes stuff we do, we don't even go to delve into that. When you say you fell into it, how and when did that happen? So I, I come from a completely different industry. I come from the fitness industry. So for 25 years, for a quarter of a century, I'm used to being on stage, jumping around, motivating, inspiring people, having fun. So this is why, you know, for me, having fun and loving what you do is so important to me because I always did. And then I was getting, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So it was like, how much longer can I keep this up? Teaching very high energy classes. I owned my own fitness studio. And but I loved to, to do it. You know, I love mm -hmm. to be there in front of people. And I fell into um, I took what I. What I would say is I thought I was taking the easy route because I knew I wanted to uh, be a speaker and still to motivate people without getting sweaty. Yes. <laughs> but I didn't have a program. So I started selling other people's programs. So I was selling high ticket affiliate programs. So for me, 
I saw that as the easy route. I don't have to create anything. I can just sell this thing that isn't mine. And I was very good at it. I was very good at selling other people's stuff. Mm. But the uh, the company got shut down literally overnight. And I was like, oh, wow. I am never putting all my energy, focus and money because I'd invested myself mm. into something that I don't control. So I wanted to create my own program. And I thought I should, <laughs> that being the key word, I thought I should go back to my roots of health and wellness. Mm. And I retrained uh, in nutrition, studied uh, the ketogenic diet for health benefits and fasting, intermittent fasting. And I was just launching a speaking career because I wanted to do live events. Right. And guess when that was? Beginning 2019. Of the yeah. Oh. Just before. So just before my first big one, I'd invested heavily. And then, of course, lockdown happened and forget that. And then I was stuck at home. The keto diet went out the window. I was eating rubbish because I was depressed. Mm. And I thought I can't sell something that I'm not doing. That in my book, that's unethical. It mm. can't be do as I say, not as I do. And I put on an online summit, as I said, with these 20 speakers, not for profit, just to try and lift people's spirits during mm. that terrible time. And serving. on the back of that, yeah, just serving whilst learning something. Mm. And I was offered a radio show at the back of it. And I just said, yes, I didn't know why in the beginning. I just thought, do you know what? I love, I love doing it. I'll do it and I'll figure it out as I go. And it was purely through speaking to so many coaches, you know, because I was only interviewing back then. Mm -hmm. And I thought they're all passionate about what they do. They are all highly skilled, but many still struggling to get clients. And that's what prompted me to want to show up and serve to help. And now I've sort of simplified everything and like, you know what, if you if you think you're going to love doing podcasting, why not use podcasting as the vehicle to drive your business so it's been a journey Roberta it it wasn't an initial plan it's evolved naturally and I would say intuitively you know mm -hmm. things happened you know I, I when I had this aha moment of guys none of none of you are in competition with each other you're all doing different things with collaboration different things in your is better than competition <laughs> you read my mind yes why don't we collaborate and mm. 10 days later I was offered the radio station so I went thank you universe yes mm. so yes it's funny when you listen to that inner voice you know, because I talk a lot when I shh, verbally and mentally, the idea, the right ideas come through. That's what I truly believe. Your inner communication. Yes. We have to listen to it, don't we? Mm -hmm. We override. I override because I'm talking, I'm thinking and I don't listen. And it's in the times where I. I call it my practicing, my unthinking in quiet. And then these ideas come up. Mm -hmm. And would you say part of the journey, as you said, at first you didn't know what it was going to look like. How much does being flexible and adaptable play into that? So much. I mean, if you, 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 you know, you've, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yes, I would say I have built my business totally backwards. And I wouldn't advise anybody starting out doing it that way. You know, there is a better way. But what I would say is about that. Stop thinking about the things you think you should do because everybody else is doing it rather than go inwards and really think about what you love doing 
and work from there, from that place. Forget about what you think will make money or what you think. Forget all that stuff. What would you really, really love to do? If you could map out your ideal working day, what would you be doing? Who would you be working with? And from that place, then Mm. the right plan and the right strategy can come through rather than doing it from the outside in. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Back to your inner communication. Find out what's fun. You've mentioned fun more than once. What you love to do and then work from there. And if you're in the spirit of service, what is that quote? When you give more people what they want, you will automatically get what you want. You'll be serving them. And in return, you get what you want. There you go. And so, yes, when you come from a place of service, Mm -hmm. you you can't do anything wrong, you know. (laughs) But yes, like you say, going back to, yes, how important is it to be flexible? Yeah, because you might not get it right the first time. Like we gave up the radio station, but we stayed with the podcast network because we were being spread too thin. We were promoting the station and their shows and then their podcast. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's cut out all the noise and we focus on the one thing that people want, which is to build their podcast so that they can grow their audience, build influence within their audience and build their client list. Mm -hmm. You know, when we simplify. So sometimes, uh, sometimes you, you, you have to make these mistakes not mistakes because they're lessons yes but you if you you don't know if you don't try and then if you try that and think okay mm, that that's co- actually creating more work for me as well let's try and simplify and really focus in um but yes in order to do that you have to be flexible and adaptable mm-hmm. absolutely Yes. And if anyone is listening and wondering, what is a podcast network? So basically, we just set people, everybody has their own podcast channel, right? But we also have a network so people can come and find who is on our network, what other shows, it's not just my show. Um, So really, I'm there to support somebody coming in who thinks, you know, a lot of people think that all you've got to do is speak into a mic. But what we look at is, well, why I, do you want a podcast? Is it in alignment with your whole business? Is it in alignment with the end coaching program or whatever it is you sell at the end? Is it in sync? And then from there, right, everybody wants to just grow their listener, listener base. Oh. But if the messaging isn't right and the content that you're creating isn't right, just having more listeners might not drive more business. So when you realize who your audience is and you can create the kind of content that will attract or sometimes even create your ideal client, mm. because throughout your podcast, as I say, you can get to demonstrate, you can pick one pain point that your listeners might be struggling with and you go over that point, pain point, you demonstrate how you can help people with that pain point. So you take people through a journey without having to sell anything to them. Because if it resonates with the listener, you're going to turn the listener into a lead. They are going to come into your world and then you continue to nurture them and bring them into whatever it is that you're selling. So it's an organic way. It's an authentic way of bringing the right people into your world. And as we mentioned earlier, so you do help your coaching clients with the messaging so that they're not creating this, I'm for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we we run we run monthly workshops where we give people the blueprint mm-hmm. because what everybody is going to have a slightly different blueprint. There isn't, I don't believe in a one size fits all. Right. You know, what does that look like? 
if if you're any you know if people are out there coaches out there and they're just tired of constantly coming up with content for social media posts well like simplify it your podcast can be used in the written format the video format the audio format can be broken down into short snippets use that drive everybody into your podcast and then to move them along if you want to do sales calls or what we prefer to do is do one to many mm. and run more of a deep dive and get to be with people it create an experience for people so you have more time to actually showcase how you can help people so there's you know there's a flow with it you know there's a flow with it so yeah we do all the back end stuff if people want that but also we we can just give them the blueprint mhm mm so in addition to the blueprint do we then do you, do they have a, a case where I record my episode like we're doing now. We're recording, right? And then once we're done, I take the file, I download it, give it to Karen. This is your baby. Yeah. Goodbye. A absolutely. <laughs> we take care of post-podcast production, but we also do implementation days. Because like I said, you know, you can, you can learn anything you want to learn from Google, can't you? You can scroll through a ton of YouTube videos. Yeah. However knowledge by itself isn't going to make you take action and what we found because we were only providing the platform we were still people weren't sticking it out because they didn't have the strategy which is why we've changed our business model to do the whole thing because what we found was if we were just leaving them to themselves to just give me the episode to put up it still wasn't enough because they weren't getting an ROI. So they weren't keeping it going and they were giving up too soon. So we were like, oh, something needs to change. You know, now we've grown our podcast. We want everybody else to have the same kind of success. So w once people have got their blueprint, if they want to, we run implementation days where we'll map out like three months worth of shows we will actually set up the podcast channel with them on that day throughout that day everything will be launched and I even co-host their first episode to put them at ease yeah. because when we do something once not just watch a video about doing it but actually do it it feels easier. So they're more likely to go on and do it again and again. And when they use our formula for it all, it is actually really, really simple. Mm. Not easy, but simple. simple. Yes. Yeah, so once you do something for the first time, whatever horror movie you played in your mind before, you realize, wait a minute, I'm still here. <laughs> this is okay. Oh, I can do it actually. <laughs> oh, absolutely. After the and it, first one. Mm. And it doesn't have to be perfect, does it? No. You know, we, you know, some people, they, ugh, analysis paralysis, you know, they're, they're waiting for everything to be perfect. Oh, Roberta. You're my not stuff is going to learn. Exactly. You're not going to learn when I, before I started, I did a three day masterclass, six hours a day. You to this day, I don't remember half, more than half the stuff that was sent there. And I was also not going to know any of what I know now had I not started. If you don't start, Absolutely. you can't just cram it all up in your memories and memorize and say, okay, I'm going to be perfect in this way before I start. It doesn't work that way. You have to no. just do it. Just get started. You will learn along the way. Some of the stuff you learned might come back. You're like, oh, that's when I get stuck. And this is why they said this. But you don't exactly. learn by just putting it in your mind. No, no. And that's I think that's why we changed our model, because we wanted people to stop overanalyzing it and just do it. Look, I'll record your first show. I'll do the post production even so that when we come on the implementation day, you, you're launching. There's no getting away from it. You're launching a podcast today. That is it. We are going to implement what you've learned. 
Mm -hmm. then because you've done it once, you can then go and do it again and again and again. And it will improve, improve. I'm far from perfect. But the beauty of podcasting, like I said, it doesn't have to be. You get no. to show up as you. That's and it. why would it, when when we talk about, especially for public speaking, why would you want to sound perfect? Because first of all, that's not normal or real or authentic, as you said. And you don't want people thinking, unless I sound perfect, I'm not going to be able to do this. No, that's not the goal. Yeah. Absolutely. And and for me, so back in 2019, where I thought I was launching my speaking career, my oh. first one, I cannot explain how petrified I was. You know, I'd learned my 20 minute talk and I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. And I got there and all these seasoned speakers, I felt so small. I honestly felt sick. I wanted to run out that room. And then the moment I got up on stage, although I couldn't, I couldn't do the clicky thing with the, yeah. so bless him, the sort of sound engineer yeah, and that helped me so. out because mm -hmm. I couldn't do two things at it once. I couldn't pointer. remember my words, <laughs> but I did it. Mm. And the thing is, is like podcasting is even so much easier than all of that. You don't have to remember a script. It's conversational. Right. You you don't have to make out that you're this perfect speaker. You're just being Nobody you. is. No. Even the ones you idolize, we've been doing it for 50 years. Actually, I have a friend who's a, a, a speaking coach, communications coach, and he says, I say to my clients, go to the speaker that you idolize, you've been idolizing for decades, take a notebook and a pen and write down, is it? intentionally like actively look for their mistakes you will find them but because when you idolize someone and you put them on a pedestal which trust me they've earned it but there's this thing you have this fear of i could never be like karen look how perfectly she sounds and that we don't want people to feel that way that's when they don't do it ah uh, there you go you've said it you know and you don't it, it doesn't have to be like that it really doesn't so the way I see it, it's the easiest format to showcase what you do. Because I don't know about you, like I would get guests bio and I could go to their website and I could create a story in my head around what it is they do. Mm. And then when I actually ask them the questions on the show, by the end of it, I'm like, oh, and I have a deeper understanding of what it is. So I, I just feel that Having this platform is a fantastic way to get your message out there and for people to have an understanding. And if it resonates with them, then great. And if not, great too. It re it, it, there's no rejection. Mm -mm. And that's why I say you just naturally, authentically attract the right people for you. And that is exactly what we're working towards. Back to when you were going for your first speaking, keynote speaking assignment, please tell us how you prepared, because we talk a lot about public speaking, as I mentioned earlier. How, what was it like to prepare and how did you overcome the nerves? Because you said you were petrified, especially after speaking, speaking after those who had been seasoned speakers. Yes. Well, I mean, for one, I meditate a lot. <laughs> um to to really sort of calm me when I say I mean I created my script as it were mm -hmm. and I practice it was just practice 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 until I knew it off pat I, when I say I come from the fitness world I my passion was teaching if anybody out there has heard of Les Mills classes, body pump, body combat, body jam. They have them all over the world, mm -hmm. but it's pre-choreographed. So for all my life, I would be given the choreography. I've just got to learn it. It's all to music. So I've just got, I've got to learn it that perfectly that I can then go out and teach it and add my spin on it. And that's what I've always done for, for I did that for a quarter of a century. So in my head, learning 
you know, once I've mapped out what I wanted to say and included the stories, and yes, you've got to, you know, showcase you, you've got to share your story. It's that sort of hero, you know, the hero's journey. And once I have it, I've got to learn it, learn it, learn it, learn it. So it's automatic. I haven't got to try to remember. I, I've just got to go out there and deliver it. However, that that's what I mean. That was such a different experience to what I do now. I don't do that now. Mm. You don't have to I'm memorize the script and go over it over no. and over and over again. But Speak from what the heart. did you do? Of course, yes. Which um, some of those principles can apply in a keynote, but a keynote needs preparation, as I said, to a certain extent. That's a little different from preparing a podcast interview. But how did you calm your nerves when you were about to speak? Or were you nervous at all? I was very, honestly, I, I have never. And and I thought I was confident, right? I, you know, I'm used to getting up on stage. I would be in front of hundreds of people, no problem. Right. But in this case, they're all sitting down. They're not jumping around with me. They're sitting there watching me. Totally different experience. I really have never felt fear like it. And I had to focus on my breathing and mm. what I call my unthinking. So, yes, being very present, but, you know, because otherwise my mind would have talked me out of, <laughs> it would have made me run out the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Which some of us have thought about when we started. Yes. <laughs> mm. Because as I said, and it's funny you mentioned that you are confident and you can stand in front of people and do all the fitness moves. Some people wonder why socially I'm so confident of the life of the party, but when it comes to speaking, I suddenly sh shrink. I, I don't want to be there. Yes. What is it about speaking that makes people so petrified? I, th I think it's because, so, well, I, I can only speak from my point of view. And right. I suppose yeah. the difference with me when I was teaching, they were all doing it with me. So I didn't feel like they are just zoning in on me, watching for my next mistake, you know, and that's what it, I suppose it felt like. And I thought, oh, I'm going to get tongue tied and I'm going to forget what I'm talking about. And I'm, I'm going to look like an idiot. All these imposter syndrome thoughts, stories that we create in our head they're gonna hate me oh, no, I'm gonna look like a fool they're gonna make me go viral on Twitter <laughs> <laughs> the fear it's all that fear mm. of um being judged fear of being you know laughed at or mm. fear of you know all these it's 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 crazy when you're out of it looking mm -hmm. in because you think relax but when you're in it those fears are like whew through the roof or they were for me for they were for me but once I did it once yes I'm not saying the fear there was no fear the second time or the third time however once you do it that once you then have the knowledge that it's okay to have that fear because it's going to be okay Whereas if I had put off, which I could have done, I could have backed out and gone, no, I don't want to do it yet. You know, I, you, I would have just put off again and again. So it's the actual, and that's why I, I, I suppose, really, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm mm. so adamant that is the implement, it's the doing thing. Even if you don't get it right first time, it doesn't matter. Do it. But do it rather than think about it, plan it, prep it watch another video about it, go on another course about it, read another book about it. No, stop. Take action. Do. You might get it great, do it fantastic first time. You might need improvement and 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 not to be scared of that. It's okay. Mm. It's okay not it's to okay. get it we right first time. We still get scared time. after doing it how many times? We still get scared, but don't let the nerves stop you or make you run the other direction yeah, as you say. Yeah, sure. When you look at the parallel between, you said, when you do fitness, you weren't nervous because they were jumping with you. 
when speaking, what is the parallel? What can you do with your audience so that you feel they are part of your speech and they're not just zooming in on you, like you said earlier? I think it's getting them engaged in some way will relax you. So, for instance, even if I was teaching, I'm not just giving instructions out. I would connect with the person, maybe even have a little bit of banter or, you know, to encourage them, have a laugh, get some kind of engagement will actually help you relax. And I think it's the same with speaking on stage. People think they've just got to regurgitate this uh, signature pro- uh, signature talk that they've just learned. However, if you get engagement from the audience, that actually helps you relax as That's well. True. That's true. And they, like I said, sometimes they laugh with you. Sometimes, And when you laugh with, if you make a mistake, which we all do, if you laugh with them about it, you realize that they're not out here waiting for you to make a mistake and make it go viral. They laugh with you and you connect in that fashion as well. Yes. And it's okay, isn't it, to show up as being, we're all vulnerable. Um, We're not claiming that we're perfect. We're not claiming, you know, it is, it's okay to muck up. It is, it's okay not to get it word for word perfect. And it's all about the experience, Mm -hmm. I feel. That's so, true. and it's I know it's easy to say relax <laughs> when you're when <laughs> like you're said, nervous. We also still get nervous, yeah, yeah. Mm. But just understand that that's a natural part of it, and then just ugh, breathe. One last thing, Karen. Let's take that now to podcasting. How do you connect with your listeners? Well, I will encourage them to reach out to me as well, even for a shout out. Sometimes I do shout outs at the beginning of the show. Mm -hmm. And I will always encourage them to basically, I only send people to my one thing, which is my workshop, you know, because what I see is a lot of people and my guests do it, even though I prep them beforehand and say, don't do it. When it comes to the end, they want to give them their Facebook link, their LinkedIn link, their this link, their that look. And then confusion, overwhelm. Nobody's going to do any of that. I do that. I'm guilty. (laughs) (laughs) I used to. I used to. Because, again, we don't want want them to miss. You know, they might connect me on Facebook. They might connect me. So I need to give them everything. So what we say is, no, give them one thing, one good reason to come into your world. Then when they're in your world, then you can say, hey, do you want to connect on Facebook? Hey, do you want to connect on LinkedIn? But otherwise, how can you monitor whether that worked, whether that was a success? Because you don't know who's come to, Mm, they might have mm. clicked on your Facebook. You don't know who did or didn't. Whereas if you've got something to give them of value Mm -hmm. that would be of interest to them, you're bringing them into your world. And from there, because you can't control Facebook, they could say tomorrow that no coaches are allowed. Remember the day that it was off, the whole world came down. (laughs) The whole world came to a standstill. So you could do all that. Mm. remember earlier you you said you know you just scroll I remember one time I had a coach who said here's my problem with Facebook ads you literally are sending people to a place where they're going to have all kinds of distractions they're not going to be focused on anything you say like they're scrolling like you said it just scroll scroll so they, you don't have their attention he said I'm not a fan of that for that reason mm. Mm. yeah yeah exactly that's it Whereas if you get them into your world in a way Mm -hmm. that you can either email them your Facebook link or email them your LinkedIn or email them your Facebook group, but you've got them, you know, you've, you've got access to them. Now you can, when you do have something new, you can email them. They're in your world. And I think that's the important thing and get them to subscribe to your podcast because they'll get a notification of the next one and you're building. Mm -hmm. 
every episode is building on the next and they are getting to know the real you rather than some AI generated fake version. Photoshop. <laughs> Karen Roberts, the podcast strategist hailing all the way from the UK. This has been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. You are so much fun and you keep things simple. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you. My absolute pleasure. And before you go, now that you've shared with us the strategy of bringing listeners into your world, what would you like to share for them in order to reach you? So if you'd like to learn how you can do this, if you want the blueprint, I do have a, and it's free, a mm -hmm. workshop. You can go to Podcast Profits Unleashed. So that's podcastprofitsunleashed.com forward slash workshop. And uh, you can register there. It's a real deep dive. But the beauty is, is that you will walk away with a complete blueprint on how to get an ROI from your podcast. Podcast profitsunleashed.com slash sure. workshop yes mm -hmm. to enter into karen roberts world the podcast strategist who will give all this free information in order for you to launch and grow your podcast thank you so much karen for spending your time with us today thank you bye for now my pleasure. Goodbye to you as well. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a rating and a review on iTunes and Spotify and stay tuned for more episodes to come.